Hey, it's number one best-selling author and motivational speaker, Eric Qualman, but most of you know me as Equal Man, and I'm super excited about today's show on seven super tips, because we're featuring the Shark Tank's one and only, Damon John, who is not only an expert when it comes to branding, but is also a fantastic individual. I got to spend some time with him backstage in Orlando, and I can't say enough great things about him. And you're gonna get a lot out of watching these seven tips today. So I hope these tips help unlock your inner superhero because all of us at the end of the day have that superpower within us. Can you tell me a little bit about that once that passion finally, you know, caught on, you know, and you finally decided, you know, this is something that I want to move forward with and a little bit about that first product and, and how it kind of all took off from there. And then did you ever decide, you know, at that point it was like no slowing you down, right? Yeah, well, you know, when that passion, when that when that thing grabs a hold of you, and as they say, when the needle is finally in the vein, and you're you're really hooked, it's like being in love. It's like, um, you know, you thought you thought you liked somebody when you were 13, 14 years old, and you know that was just something new, and it was puppy love. But when you're 22, 23 years old, and you're out there sitting there making life decisions and saying, I can see myself with this person for the rest of my life, and you're getting butterflies every time you see them. That's what it is when you have a business and you have a company that you love. You can't see anything else. And, you, you know, I would have dressed people till today for free if I could. And I'm sure you hear that from everybody else. You know, an artist will rap and sing, you know, anytime they, they can be seen. And just like the kids in school who always got kicked out in special ed who are comedians, they can't help it. They know that that's the biggest bully in the schoolyard and they can't help it but crack a joke even though they're going to get their head cracked open but they just love what they're doing. And that's just how it was as a business. You know, I, when I fell in love with FUBU when I, when I saw that first person walking down the street with my product on. Many entrepreneurs uh, fail due to overfunding. So you look, we're in a beautiful location, Trattoria El Marino. It's a legendary family in the restauranteur business, and they've been doing this for years. But you look at somebody that decides that they can cook and they want to work on grandma's recipe. They'll go out and they'll get a hundred thousand dollar loan. They'll open up a restaurant. They have no experience doing that. They'll have a beautiful place, great staff, but they didn't sell not one piece of food in their entire life, and they didn't understand the operation of the business. Eight months in a year in when they realize why they don't have any customers because they didn't have a customer base in the beginning. They have a hundred thousand dollar loan now on the business and they haven't figured out the business. Then all of a sudden they have to close down. I start off literally with eight hundred dollars worth of hats and that was the beginning. My job here is not to fight for you but they want to know my opinion. You're the real deal. You're the real deal and this is a real company and that's why I was conflicted so you don't have to speak for yourself. I'm gonna tell both of them this guy's the real deal. Wow that's I quite an endorsement. That. I appreciate that. By the time that I had really created FUBU and I did my deal with Samsung, you couldn't tell me anything about my customer that I didn't know. I knew what clothes they wore, what they drank, what they drove, everything. The color, the size, I knew they would pay $79.99, but they would not pay $99.99. You have to know your customer, you have to absolutely love them, and you have to know exactly what they want when they want it. You've said in the past that you never immediately react, that you're more of a you know reactive pers perspective. You're somebody that likes to really think things through and make a decision. Folks that might not agree with that philosophy would say, well, you'll miss opportunity. Well, you'll miss out on you know things, life will drive you by. We're in the 24-7, 365 culture. What do you say to that? I didn't say I'm falling asleep. I just said, don't react, you should respond. So if you see on Shark Tank, a lot of times, I'm the last one to go into the deal. There's two reasons. One is because maybe I'm not as smart as the rest of the guys and I'm sitting there trying to figure everything out and I, I need to take off my shoes to do some of the counting as well, right? Or I just want to see how it plays out because as I see a lot of the other guys, you know, these other four guys up here are brilliant. Even though they're morons, they're brilliant, right? <laughs> so when they're... when they're, Little love-hate there. Yeah, when they're chiming <laughs> in, I'm listening and I'm weighing everything. If I just immediately react, I play my hand. So I'm just waiting to respond. What are you thinking through as you're as you're listening to anything, not just Shark Tank, but any pitch or any meeting? You know, are there certain key pieces of information that you're looking for, and regardless of the kind of meeting it is? Yes, I'm, I'm looking for how much do I know of this business, and if I don't know enough about this business, who can I couple this business with? Whether it's a celebrity that's going to give it notoriety and or distribution, financing, uh, you know, something of that nature. And, um, you know, where's the scalability? Is this business a, you know, one trick pony, one item, or can I look at other divisions that we can open underneath it? And, you know, how long am I gonna be in on this? Three years, five years, 10?
game. Right? Yeah. So yeah. say like on your darkest day, because it's sometimes that's the side people don't see. Uh-huh. You know, all the no's, all the rejections or whatever. Absolutely. Um, would you say your spiritual life, but maybe his family or these partners that you speak of, what was it that, that said for you, I'm not going to quit, I'm going to keep pushing through? So, I mean, that's a really good good question. Um, yeah, So I, I called Shubal from 1989 to 1992 because I, 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 uh, I ran out of money, but I would only run out of $500, $1,000, so I was taking affordable steps, number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, I had an amazing mentor in my life, a uh, man who run, ran a corner store. He didn't have any investment in my business. I would go sweep up his store, and he would... T- tell me and, and, and let me know what to do. But I also had a group of like-minded people, my partners, mm-hmm. who when I wanted to quit, they wouldn't let me quit and mm-hmm. vice versa. And you know, you're going to fail more than you succeed. Yeah. You're going to get more doors slammed in your face because I think everybody here in this room who are amazing broadcasters, everybody think you just woke up and said, I want to get on the mic, forget all the interns, all the people that went to school for communication. They they they, they don't need this. I'm just going to come in. You got the door slammed on your face. You got fired. Mm-hmm. But you found out where you need to pivot. And you also, that following that you have started to follow you mm-hmm. everywhere. And then people started to say, mm-hmm. I can't tell you no because all these people are knocking on the door. If you buy the following and you put out advertising commercial, oh, I'm sway, I'm cool. Come to my show and you just buy it and you're not worth anything. You're still going to come up with the same results. You're just going to spend a lot of money getting to the point of failing. Right. So it's really just about understand that. And in the book, I have in this book 15 people that I've interviewed that are, I mean, Kevin Plank, who's doing $4 billion a year with Under Armour, mm-hmm. didn't have money to go past the toll. He didn't have $3, so they had to write him a ticket to go, you know, yeah. go to the toll. Or Mark Burnett, the producer of my television show, right. who was, uh, was in the special services, special forces in Britain. Mm-hmm. He came over here, couldn't get a job. He became a nanny. Mm. Then he started selling T-shirts on Venice Beach. You know, people like that, like Rob Durdak, the skateboarder with Fantasy Factories. Yeah. You yeah. know yeah, Rob. Yeah, I know Rob. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah, He's he been up here. He couldn't get into any of uh, in, in the skateboarding competition because he didn't have any money. Mm-hmm. So he said, "Can I get if I get six people to enroll in this competition, can I get in? They said, uh, yeah, you can do that, but you'll never do that. And he said, all right, here you go. Here's a six. And he got in there. Wow. So it's interesting. It's people like that. Mm-hmm. You have Steve Aoki on, in there, too. Yeah. And we know he comes from money. Right, exactly. Good okay. point. He comes from money, but it ain't his money. He comes from money, money, and it was actually a problem. Okay. When he went to the streets and he was out there spinning records, you know what they said to him? Get out of here, you rich boy. You don't rich. get out. You ain't keeping it real. Oh, where you going? Home to your house, a mansion, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then when he went home to his father, who had a uh, uh, Benny Hanna's, Benny Hanna's yeah. who was a very disciplined Japanese man who came over here during the war, he said, "You spinning records? Mm. That's a career. You ain't getting none of this money." Mm. Until you come in here and work in this place, you're not getting any of this money. And Steve said, I'm not going to do that. He started doing rent parties. He would fly all the way from L.A. to New York, New York to L.A. to get a gig that would pay him $100. He would be on standby yeah. and everything else he had to do. And now he's doing about $30 yeah. million a year, most touring DJ in the world. Damn, he's doing $30 million? I think so. Shit. Yeah. All right. Okay. And he, that's why he's jumping so high. <laughs>mentors, right? And you can always make money off other people's mistakes. And that's what I put in the book because most people have been brought up with you need either a famous last name or you need some contacts and I don't have any of that. I mean, I have a famous last name, but if I tell Elton John I'm his son, most likely he's not going to believe me for various different reasons, right? right. <laughs> so um, that's what I put in the book. And and if you do look at the wealthiest people in the world, over 60% of them are self-made men and women. That means they were all broke. So everybody out there thinking they need to go borrow money from somebody or go mortgage your house and do all that type of stuff, they don't need to do that. When I mortgaged my house, I already had $300,000 in orders. I already had proof of concept. All right? I just didn't do that right away. And that was not until 96, 97, like I said, and I had already started in 89. Uh, so, so that's exactly what the book is for. It's, like, it's stop using excuses. Stop thinking you need money. Stop thinking you need contacts, and you just got to go out there and get it but done. But what do you need? I'm, and I'm going to go to you next, Rosenberg. But what, like you said, OPM, other people's manufacturing, but that's relationships. That's the ability to pick up a phone. That's Like you said, I had proof of concept, which means you had put something together that looked like a tangible element, went to other people, and said, hey. But I got the door slammed on my face 
a hundred times before that, and I didn't just wake up with those contacts. I didn't know anybody. I had to make those contacts, and it had to be what's in the best interest for them, those people, right? Right, right. Had, it's not, it can't just be straight up a favor for you. Yeah, it wasn't a favor for but me. But that's it was key what, what you them. said, though, yeah. right? Like, you thought about, and I tell you, this happens to me often, you thought about those other people's businesses and what Correct. they needed and figured out how you could help them get what they need so they wanted you to be a part of it. How can I add value and over-deliver to them if I had to intern someplace, if I had to empty somebody's garbage, whatever I needed to do to get the opportunity to show them that I can add value. At the end of the That's day, it's going to be about though. every any business we do. It's what can you do for that person? That person has their own problems, dreams, stresses, whatever the case is. So any business we're doing today, even as we're talking, you know, and you're, you're great broadcasters and Thank people you. think it's easy. No, to tune in every single morning, to listen to, every, to, 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 to listen to you all the time, you have to be adding value to them. They, you have to be What's enriching in it for me? them. Like, with you, yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. What's in it for me? Um, and, and, and Rosenberg, next, but I, I, the reason I keep harping on this. No, but the reason I keep harping on it is because in our world right now, everybody's a fucking CEO. Yeah. Everybody's a fucking boss. Right. Everybody thinks they can be right. a boss. Very I'm going to be a boss. I need to be independent. I need to do this and I need to do that. But they aren't willing to do what we just talked about, which is figure out in what ways that their business is going to add to someone else's business so that they can all make Correct. great business Correct. together. At the end of the day, the, way, the, the, the most successful people in the world, people are buying into them personally because they add value to that person no matter what. So I even say people on the gram. I mean, the gram is very simple. It's, it's, it's a half an hour commercial. It's a half an hour television show. And if 28 minutes of it, you're selling something, then you, somebody's going to switch the channel. But at 28 minutes of it, you're giving value, whether it's humor, whether it's a visual pleasure, whether it's education. Then the two minutes that you're selling something, then somebody's going to buy something. But you have to give content and value. And everybody in the world is a customer. And there's only three ways to deal with customers. Acquire a new one, upsell a current one, or make one buy more frequently. That's it. Say that again. There's only three ways to deal with a customer, and everybody in the world is a customer. You have to either acquire a new one, upsell a current one, or make one buy more frequently. There is no other way to operate business, period. Meaning, you, e you have your, you need to either go find more customers so you make more money. Buy more oh. customers. The customers you currently have, you have to make them spend more money. Mm -hmm. Spend more money, buy, buy, buy a drink and fries. No, all right. You need to get some fries next time, right? So or buy, buy tickets to the concert and a t shirt when you get there. Correct. Mm -hmm. or, or lastly, to make them buy more, more often. Come back to the store more. That's it. And then finally, you say start selling. Start selling. You see, the best focus group in the world is people who buy things. You can give everything you want to grandma or everybody else. Everybody's going to tell you your baby's beautiful. Until you go out there and sell or until you go out there and share this concept with others, you don't know if you have something of value. When I say sell something, it doesn't mean always money. Get a thousand likes on Facebook. Sell to a local promoter in the area, uh, you know, a TV show or a magazine and say, we want to talk about this. People just always think about it. Oh, I should have, would have, could have. And they just go out and sell. I started with $40 worth of hats. That was it. And I just sold and sold and sold, and someone got thrown back at me. And then I proved it and improved it, and I sold it to them again. So you just have to go out and sell, and you have to start today. And do what you love. Don't do things just for money. Because money usually never comes, or you may end up in the wrong place because you did it for money. Right. Developing a sexual product is one thing, but creating a lasting brand legacy is completely a different beast in its own. What core values do you maintain from your early days at FUBU and your new ventures? You know, I think that there's four levels that any brand or product can go through. They won't all hit the four levels. So you can either, you can have an item, you know, and that item is, all right, I'm making bottle, there's water. And water can be getting anywhere from the fountain to the stream or you put it in a bottle. You can then have a label. You put any label on there because you go into the store and you say, well, that's bottled water. I don't know the label's name per se. Then you have more of a brand, Dasani. It's a brand, we don't know much about it, but then you can become a lifestyle, Avion, vitamin water. You know, so a lot of us don't get to the level of lifestyle where if you copy a piece of paper, somebody may say go Xerox it when really Xerox is a company, or you ask for a soda and somebody calls it a Coke, where it, it basically categorizes everything. 
uh, you search for something, they say Google it no matter how you're searching and that becomes a lifestyle. Um, the, it, it's a challenge to, to go through those processes and when I, what I do with all my companies is I say to them that the easiest thing to sell in the world is the truth. You know, back in the days it was, you know, make it, they will come and we can, we can put a, some lipstick on a pig and dress it up. With this world of transparency today, you can, you can create the biggest lie campaign that you would like, but one person at your office can send out a tweet and say it's all, it's all garbage and you're over. So if you understand that the easiest thing to sell is the truth and you know your DNA, if you put that out there, then people will understand it and people will respect it. Or at least if you lose, you know they just weren't feeling you, but you know what it was. Hey, it's Eric Qualman. I hope you enjoyed watching today's seven super tips with Damon John. As you know, these shows are all designed to help unlock and unleash your inner superpower. We're all superheroes at the end of the day. And just a quick reminder, it's not what we take from the world, it's most surely what we leave behind. I forgot, I say yeah, let me do it again, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Guy and also an incredible businessman. So I think you're gonna really find a lot to take from today's show. <laughs> Three hours a night. So I can't get, be more excited than you two about getting back into my sleep routine. Oh, we gotta redo that, sorry.